Welcome to today's video on the role of Christianity in the slave trade, with a special focus on the Catholic Church. Sometimes it's important to dive into the uncomfortable and difficult parts of history, even if it makes us squirm a little. And boy does this topic have some uncomfortable parts. We all know that slavery is one of the darkest chapters in human history, but what many people don't realize is the significant role that religion played in justifying and perpetuating the practice. And when it comes to Christianity and the slave trade, the Catholic Church was right in the thick of it. From Pope Nicholas V's 1452 papal bull that authorized the Portuguese to enslave Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ, to the Jesuit priests who owned slaves themselves, there's a lot to unpack here. But fear not, my dear viewers. We'll take a look at the history, theology, and the human impact of Christianity's involvement in the slave trade all while keeping it light and, hopefully, entertaining. So sit back, grab your popcorn, and get ready to learn about a side of Christianity that might make you cringe a little. It's going to be a wild ride. The slave trade involved the transportation and sale of African people as slaves to the Americas and other parts of the world from the 16th to the 19th century. It was a brutal and dehumanizing practice that involved capturing and enslaving people against their will separating them from their families and loved ones, and forcing them to work under inhumane conditions. The origins of the slave trade can be traced back to the European exploration and colonization of Africa in the 15th century. Europeans wanted to establish colonies in the Americas, and they needed a cheap labor source to work on their plantations and mines. They turned to Africa, where they found a ready supply of potential slaves. Africans were captured by slave traders, who would raid villages and take people by force. They were then transported across the Atlantic Ocean in brutal conditions, packed tightly into the holds of slave ships with little food or water. Many died on the journey, and those who survived were often sick and weak by the time they reached their destination. Once they arrived in the Americas, slaves were sold at auctions to the highest bidder. They were forced to work on plantations, mines, and in households, and were treated as property rather than human beings. They had no rights and were subject to brutal punishment if they disobeyed their masters. The slave trade had a devastating impact on Africa as it disrupted traditional societies and economies. Many African communities were weakened by the loss of their people and some were destroyed entirely. The Catholic Church was heavily involved in the slave trade as it was seen as a way to spread Christianity to Africa and the Americas. However, the Church's involvement was controversial, as many Catholics opposed slavery and argued that it went against Christian values. Christianity played a significant role in the transatlantic slave trade, with many Christian leaders and institutions supporting and profiting from the practice. This fact is often overlooked, as many people associate Christianity with benevolence and goodwill. However, the reality is that many Christian leaders and institutions were complicit in the slave trade and it is important to understand their role in this dark chapter of history. One of the most notable Christian institutions involved in the slave trade was the Catholic Church. While the Church did condemn the slave trade in the 15th century, this condemnation was not always enforced, and many Catholic leaders continued to own slaves and profit from the trade. The Church also played a role in justifying the slave trade with some church leaders arguing that it was a necessary evil to bring Christianity to Africa. The role of the Catholic Church in the transatlantic slave trade is a complex and controversial topic. The Catholic Church was one of the most powerful institutions in the world during the era of the slave trade, and its involvement in this system of human trafficking has been the subject of much debate and scrutiny. While some argue that the Catholic Church was complicit in the slave trade, Others maintain that the Church actively worked to end it. One of the most significant roles the Catholic Church played in the slave trade was its involvement in the colonization of the Americas. The Church played a significant role in the Spanish and Portuguese colonization of the Americas, which led to the forced labor of millions of indigenous peoples and Africans. The Church played a key role in the justification of these practices, using religious doctrine to argue that the enslavement of non-Christian peoples was justified. For example, in 1452, Pope Nicholas V issued the papal bull Dum Diversus, which gave the Portuguese monarchy the right to enslave non-Christians. Furthermore, 
The Catholic Church was involved in the sale and ownership of slaves. Many of the wealthiest and most powerful individuals in Europe and the Americas during the era of the slave trade were Catholic, and many of them owned slaves. The Church itself also owned slaves, with some religious orders, such as the Jesuits, owning plantations and using slave labor. The Church also profited from the slave trade, as it collected taxes on the sale of slaves in its territories and used the proceeds to fund its activities. Despite its involvement in the slave trade, there were also many Catholics who actively opposed it. For example, in the 16th century, the Spanish-Dominican friar Bartolomé de las Casas wrote extensively about the atrocities committed against indigenous peoples in the Americas and advocated for their rights. The Jesuit priest José de Acosta also wrote about the mistreatment of indigenous peoples and advocated for their freedom. Additionally, some religious orders, such as the Mercedarians, worked to purchase the freedom of enslaved people. In the 19th century, the Catholic Church played a role in the abolition of the slave trade. In 1839, Pope Gregory XVI issued the papal bull in Supremo Apostolatus, which condemned the slave trade and called for its abolition. The Church also played a role in the abolition of slavery in the Americas, with Catholic leaders such as Archbishop José Ignacio de Marquez advocating for the end of slavery in Colombia in the mid-19th century. However, it is important to note that the Church's involvement in the slave trade and slavery had a lasting impact on the people affected by it. The legacy of slavery can still be seen today, with many people of African descent facing discrimination and inequality. The Church has acknowledged its role in the slave trade and has apologized for its actions, but there is still much work to be done to address the lasting impacts of slavery. Protestantism was also complicit in the slave trade, with many Protestant leaders owning slaves and investing in the trade. Some Protestant leaders even used the Bible to justify slavery, pointing to passages that seemed to condone the practice. Of course, many Christians at the time opposed slavery, and there were even Christian abolitionist movements. However, the fact remains that Christianity was often used to justify and support the slave trade. One of the most interesting aspects of the relationship between Christianity and the slave trade is the role that religion played in the lives of enslaved people. Many enslaved Africans were forced to convert to Christianity, often by their captors or by missionaries who believed that Christianity could civilize them. However, many enslaved Africans also found solace and hope in Christianity, even as they were oppressed by their Christian captors. It is worth noting that the relationship between Christianity and the slave trade was complex, and there were many different perspectives on the practice within the Christian community. However, it is clear that Christianity played a significant role in the transatlantic slave trade, and it is important to acknowledge and understand this history. Of course, all of this raises some interesting questions. If Christianity was used to justify and support the slave trade, does that mean that Christianity is inherently oppressive? Does it mean that all Christians are complicit in the slave trade? These are difficult questions to answer, and the reality is that Christianity, like any religion or ideology, is complex and multifaceted. It is also worth noting that Christianity has played a role in the abolition of slavery, with many Christian abolitionists fighting against the practice. It is clear that Christianity has both supported and opposed the slave trade, and it is up to each individual to decide how they reconcile these conflicting aspects of the faith. Ultimately, the relationship between Christianity and the slave trade is a complicated and difficult one. While it is important to acknowledge the role that Christianity played in this dark chapter of history, it is also important to recognize that Christianity, like any religion or ideology, is diverse and multifaceted. The truth is, the legacy of the slave trade is still being felt today, centuries after the last slave ship set sail. Slavery was abolished in the 19th century, but its impact of it is still being felt across the globe. Let's take a look at some of the lasting effects of the slave trade. First and foremost, the slave trade created a massive wealth gap between Western nations and African nations. The slave trade was a huge source of revenue for countries like Britain, France, and Spain, and the wealth generated from it was used to fund the Industrial Revolution. Meanwhile, African nations were stripped of their resources and their people, leaving them impoverished and underdeveloped. To this day, 
Many African nations are still struggling to catch up to the rest of the world in terms of economic development. The legacy of the slave trade is also evident in the racial inequalities that still exist in many parts of the world. The idea of white supremacy, which was used to justify the slave trade, is still present in many societies today. It's hard to deny that race plays a role in things like hiring decisions, police brutality, and the criminal justice system. These issues are deeply ingrained in our societies, and it will take a lot of work to undo the damage that has been done. One of the most insidious legacies of the slave trade is the notion of whiteness itself. The idea of a white race is a relatively recent invention, and it was created in large part to justify the subjugation of non-white peoples. The idea that there are inherent differences between races, and that some are superior to others, has been used to justify everything from slavery to colonialism to genocide. It's a deeply flawed and harmful concept, and one that we need to work to dismantle. Of course, the legacy of the slave trade is not all bad. The resilience and strength of the people who survived the slave trade and its aftermath is truly remarkable. Despite centuries of oppression, black people around the world have managed to create vibrant cultures and communities that continue to thrive today. From music to fashion to food, the influence of black culture can be seen everywhere. While it's easy to feel overwhelmed and discouraged by the atrocities committed during the slave trade, it's important to remember that we've come a long way since those dark days, thanks to the tireless efforts of abolitionists, activists, and everyday people who stood up against injustice, we've made significant progress towards a more just and equal society. Of course, there's still a lot of work to be done. The legacy of slavery continues to impact communities and institutions in ways that are all too familiar. But by acknowledging our past and working towards a better future, we can continue to move forward and create a world where everyone is treated with dignity and respect. While it's important to acknowledge the harm that was done, it's also important to celebrate the resilience of the people who survived it. We can't change the past, but we can work towards a better future, one where all people are treated with dignity and respect, regardless of their race. Oh, and before you go, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. Thanks for watching.